Hey guys, a uh, quick video, uh, kind of a hobby update, gaming update, and just some general stuff as normal. Um, first things first, hobby update, uh, as far as what I've been doing hobby-wise uh, since the last video. Um, I have nearly finished my M18 Hellcat. Uh, the only thing left on it um, are decals, some um, shading, and little bit more weathering uh, so I would say it's about 90% done um, I'm gonna when I put the decals on that I'm gonna hit the decals on my Sherman and my half track at the same American half track at the same time and just get it all done um, otherwise what's on my bench right now I'm working on some uh, US Airborne um, I think there is a light mortar team um, lieutenant uh, plus a couple uh, men to go with the lieutenant and then a small squad uh, so it's kind of a small unit that I'm working on I just want to see how they look um, I'm using the uh, paint suggestions uh, the Vallejo paint suggestions that Warlord has um, kind of up in the air on the how the uniform color came out uh, Warlord suggests uh, mixing two colors uh, to get the uh, the paratrooper uniform um, and the more that I get more paint that I put on them and the more details that get filled in the, the better they look so I think they'll be okay but um, I'll show you uh, we will do a quick video at the end of the Hellcat and where I'm at with the uh, paratroopers um, as far as the paratroopers go um, my last video was kind of a speaking of paratroopers actually my last video was kind of a little bit of a rant of um, how the paratroopers, a condition the paratroopers showed up uh, when I got them from Warlord. Um, I, I want to thank you guys that did comment and gave me um, suggestions, advice on what to do. I thank you for that. Um, I don't, once again, I'm not knocking Warlord. It's something that happens with every wargaming company I've ever dealt with, and I know that it happens with others as well. Um, where things come broken, I mean, it's just it's just how it happened. That's just how it goes. Um, so I haven't reached out to Warlord um, yet. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I think I'm down to, um, I'm actually down to seven, it looks like seven minis that, that are, um, that have broken barrels that um, I haven't really, uh, either a haven't been able to fix or or haven't tried yet um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that um, I'll call it an opportunity to uh, learn something new and maybe learn how to fix something that I think right now is unfixable and kind of experiment so uh, once again you know not knocking warlord you have they have an awesome game I really enjoy it and they have awesome products so it's just it's just the nature of the beast um, enough said about that so um, the status of my because uh, like I said in my last video uh, I ordered with the Hellcat it's about thousand points worth of airborne um, so the status of that army right now is um, have the ones that I need to fix uh, attempt to fix I have um, some that are on bases, some that are cleaned up and need to be put on bases. Um, and and far, as far as bases, what I use are, are metal fender washers. Um, and I just, I, I super glue them to that and then do my basing. And then I, obviously I have some painted. Um, some are about half painted, some are almost done. Um, so I think what I'll do since I have about four different stages that the minis are in. I think what I'll do is kind of a how I do basing. Not a tutorial, not a how-to, um, just what I do to base my minis. Um, I think it's a simple, easy way to base uh, minis. I actually have I've started using it, have been using it on trees. Um, I also used it the technique for my minefields that I did a video on previously. Um, and I also did it for the bases for the uh, ruined buildings that uh, that Warlord sells that I got in the uh, Salt of Normandy box kit. So 
Um, it's something that I like. It's useful. It's easy, quick. And if I, I show some folks how I do it, maybe you can pick up something that you want to um, use yourself. That's kind of how I transferred how I did my basing in the past to where I'm at now. I kind of picked up a few things from other folks' videos on how they do basing. I don't do it exactly how they did it, but I took bits and pieces from each one and got the effect that I like. Um, so I think we'll do that. Um, well, like I said, we'll do a video at the end of the Airborne. I would like you, I'd like you guys to comment, suggestions um, at the end for the Airborne, see where I'm at. Um, keep in mind they're obviously not done. I haven't done any shading or anything like that on the ones that are almost done. So um, keep that in mind. Um, Game-wise, moving on. Game-wise, so... Uh, through the YouTube community, I, I actually met um, Sean. He goes by Wahoo Warrior um, on YouTube, and he actually we actually live 90 miles apart. And um, he does he's doing bold action as well as I am. So we actually got together at, at his place uh, last weekend and played a game. Uh, it was a thousand point game. He had a thousand point um, German hair box set that he got from Warlord, and he uh, we went up against um, my forces were basically two platoons, um, a platoon of U.S. infantry with supported by a Sherman, and a platoon of um, uh, the the U.S. infantry also had a sniper, uh, machine gun team, and two squads plus the lieutenant obviously. Um, the, um, the other platoon was an airborne platoon, um, and it was actually supported by the Hellcat, light mortar, um, lieutenant, and I screwed up, and it wasn't really a legit, le legal, I should say, um, army list, because I only had one squad. Um, Sean pointed it out to me that it actually should be two, and it wasn't pointed out in a negative way by no means. Sean's a great guy. He's very uh, supportive and and helpful in the hobby. So I I didn't catch it. I had totally spaced it off. Um, I actually used bold action dot uh, bold action dot easy army dot com's website to build the army list. It didn't catch it either. Usually it catches errors, um, and it probably didn't catch it because that's one of the most common roles in building an army. Uh, through bold action. So um, I have tweaked my army uh, so now it's actually a legal list and I'm keeping the two platoons US Infantry supported by a Sherman and US Airborne uh, supported by a Hellcat and I just kind of tweaked um, numbers of troops kind of divided it out a little bit and some other things as well. Uh, so uh, the first game that I had Versus somebody, it didn't go my way. Um, I got beat <laughs> pretty, um, pretty. I won't say easily. I got it. He, he basically dominated, but it, it wasn't an ass kicking by any means. Um, it's just my game plan didn't work because of the dice gods. I need to like pray to the dice gods, I guess, before I play before I play a game. Because uh, there were a couple turning points that um, the dice didn't go my way and it dramatically um, impacted my plan, um, which ended in defeat. But it was an awesome game. Um, Sean and I have been talking a little bit back and forth, and we're going to plan on doing one in June again. And hopefully uh, this time I get some payback. Um, he's also putting together some group of guys in his area, uh, building up. Um, a group to play bold action so uh, look forward to maybe not only playing Sean but some other guys in that group and and maybe meet in Omaha um, and maybe try to expand gaming group there as well. Omaha's um, a good meeting place probably for both of us if we need to. Um, if they've got several gaming stores. Um, unfortunately the gaming stores that I've stopped at in, in Omaha and asked questions of the um, the folks there, there's not a bold action crowd per se. Um, it's mostly 40k 
and um, and Flames of War, I guess, is kind of big at one of them. So maybe we can change that and get a, a bigger group going around this area. Um, so enough said about that. Uh, one thing, too, I'll show as maybe a video to come in the future. I took a couple of what I used for flame markers um, with the game to the game that I played with Sean, and he actually liked how they how they looked. They're really simple to make. Um, they're not the t the electronic tea light, the LED tea lights. Um, so I think what I'll do is a quick how to how I do them. Uh, basically, all they consist of are a metal washer. You can use MDF wash. You know the MDF bases probably that you get from Warlord. You know these. Um, or plastic ones, anything really stick. Basically, all you do is take some, take your base, put some white glue on there. You can probably use hot glue. Um, take some polyfilla, polyfiller, excuse me, that you put in stuffed animals and pillows, and just squish it on there. Tease it out so you got a good flame effect or smoke effect, and then just hit it with spray paint, whatever color you want. The spray paint actually hardens the polyfiller and uh, or polyfiller or whatever the hell it's called and uh, it makes it more rigid. So I think I'll do a quick how to or how I do them. Um, I actually started making those for 20 millimeter uh, moderns. So I have some flames, I have some black smoke and some colored smoke uh, for smoke grenades of different colors as well. Um, so that might be another video coming up here in the new future. Um, one other thing, I guess, hobby-wise is I got, my chair just slid on me. Um, I got a 28 millimeter church, uh, from Gamecraft Miniatures. Um, it's a company based here in the United States. Alan is the, the main guy there. And, um, it's MDF product, um. Gamecraft Miniatures, I've ordered stuff from them in the past, primarily 20 millimeter modern stuff. Um, good product, um, good value for the money, um, easy to put together, uh, no problems. I actually ordered a couple paint racks from them too. I have one together, one that I need to put together. Um, Alan's really good if you have questions. He does some foam core buildings too if you want really cheap effective terrain and you don't want to cut the foam board yourself he has that as well and, and I think his ranges now are from six millimeter one to uh, 128 20 one 285th scale uh, 10 millimeter for you drop zone commander folks um, uh, let's see 20 millimeter 28 millimeter and I think he might have some 15 too I don't remember but I'll put a link to his website down below uh, definitely check it out Alan's a nice guy um, if you have questions, I've had questions in the past and sent him an email and he's been been pretty quick on getting back with um, answering my questions and is, seems like a really nice guy. Uh, so enough said about that. I'll put that together here maybe in the next few weeks and do a review video of it. Um, but the kit looks like it's really simple to put together. I ordered a couple accessories to it. There's a shingle kit, um, which should make the roof pop a little bit more, make it more three-dimensional uh, than flat. Um, and then the other is a stained glass kit, which is basically on, um, is printed on plastic. And the way that the, the church is made, there's an outside wall and inside wall. And, and basically what I'm going to do is cut the windows, uh, leave a little extra space, glue the windows to one side, sandwich it together, and then... Um, you know, obviously glue the two walls together as well, and it should have a really neat effect. I think that I'm I'm really happy with what they look like, so I'll see how they go together. Um, so that's that's pretty much hobby wise and game wise what's been going on. Um, so today is um, Memorial Day here in the states, uh, so I want to take uh, this you know I'll take a few moments to say. Uh, thank you to all those that are serving our country, um, those ha that have served, and and all and obviously we all need to um, to take a moment today and 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 remember the sacrifices made um, by by those those guys that um, didn't get to come home um, that paid the ultimate sacrifice for this country. Um, I know I have a lot of subscribers that are overseas, and and uh, 
and what I'll say to all of my subscribers is if you see a vet out in public, um, I don't know what it's like overseas, but um, here in the U.S., a lot of vets will wear hats, you know, that say veteran of Vietnam or, or World War II veteran, or they'll have their ship, you know, hat with their ship name and, and stuff like that, or they'll have shirts. Um, you know, if you see a veteran out in public, take a minute, say thank you, shake their hand, and um, I've... I've gotten in the habit of doing that the past several years, and and it's 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 a rewarding experience. You know, I don't I don't ask questions, I don't pry. It's just a simple thank you and a handshake, and it means a lot to those to those guys. Um, so, you know, take a minute and do that. It, it's two minutes out of your day, and and that makes you know it it makes their day totally makes their day. You can see it in their face. Um, also, for Memorial Day, um, it's kind of a time for me to to think, too. Um, obviously, not only for the folks that I've mentioned before, um, but it also makes me think, because we, I guess, the closest family member that um, we have lost um, due to war, in conflict uh, was my dad's uncle uh, Sergeant Lawrence Reed who um, he um, he was actually killed in action during World War II he was a ball turret gunner on a B-17 bomber um, if you don't if you're not familiar with the B-17 bomber if you google it um, the ball turret gunner you will see on the airplane that underneath about halfway under the fuselage on the bottom of it uh, there is a plexiglass ball with two machine guns uh, 50 caliber I believe um, it, that's the ball turret gunner the guy would sit down on this plexiglass ball and basically provide gun support protection to the bottom of the aircraft um, so uh, when he was, his last duty station was North Africa. Uh, they were actually on a bombing run. I, I can't remember the dates right offhand. I have them. I've been doing a lot of research on it. Um, I forgot to grab the piece of paper, but um, they were on a bombing run in Italy, I believe, or it might have even been southern Germany. And um, uh, a Mitchell Schmidt 109 um, is is the aircraft that actually shot down his bomber. Um, there was 10 crewmen on board. Um, three did safely exit the plane and were, were ultimately capture, captured and were POWs until the end of the war. Um, and unfortunately he wasn't one that made it out um, and he was killed in action. Uh, he's actually buried in the Sicily Rome, or Rome Sicily, however, it's one vice versa uh, cemetery. Um, so it's kind of a uh, a day, even though I've never met him, obviously, um, it's kind of a day that I, I think back to that. Because um, as far as I know, none of my family's been able to or has gone over to visit. And there's there's a lot of veterans that are buried overseas that families never get to go visit. And that's kind of, you know, it's kind of sad you think about it. But I'm not going to depress you all with that. Um, so enjoy the day. Remember what it's for. Uh, celebrate sacrifices made by those that, um, that were able to and willing to make the call and, and go fight for their country. And, um, enough of that. Um, I'll show you some minis and, and wrap it up. Okay, guys. So here's the part of me showing you the minis which you probably all wanted to look at begin with. So uh, this is the Hellcat. Like I said, it's I would consider it about 90% done. Uh, just needs decals and some some um, shading and final weathering on it. Um, it's a really easy kit to put. Whoops, easy kit to put together. Um, it's a really cool tank, um, recce vehicle. If you take it, that's what I took it in the game with, uh, with Sean. 
and I didn't mention, but go check out his channel. The bat rep of the game that we played is on there. Um, the Hellcat didn't fare, fare very well in its debut, but um, we'll give her a second shot. Uh, but basically, the kit, the hull is, is one piece. Uh, the only thing that you have to add are these um, guards for the headlights and stuff, which that's the same. If you ever build a Sherman, it's the same. The benefit, though, of this is there's actually holes, guide holes, for each one of these. So it's a lot better than the Sherman. I, the Sherman, the resin kit that I have uh, put together, it didn't have those, I don't believe. I'm pretty sure it didn't because I was surprised when it had it on this. Um, then this, the spare track. The hole is, is all one piece. The guys are modeled in there except for the heads. You have to put the heads in. And then this bar piece um, was probably the hardest part of it all, to be honest. You put that in, um, and then the 50 cal gets attached. Um, but otherwise, it was really easy. What I did is I this is another model I spray painted or air airbrush, excuse me, and uh, put it on. The only thing that uh, what I did is I I, uh, I painted the inside and then I put the heads in after I painted the heads. And um, it seemed like it was easier to paint. So whatever your preference is. The only thing that I had a question on, I guess, or had an issue with, when I looked at some re um, reference pictures and tried to look at Warlord, is on the 50 cal, you can see the, the mount at the bottom. Um, it was, I didn't know where exactly to put it. The reference pictures I saw had it in that location. But the the mount kind of hangs over the turret ring so it's almost like it should go back here and I've seen people put it back here um, I think on Warlord's website it's actually up front but um, that's where I put it whether it's historically accurate or not um, that I can't tell you guys but um, that's the question I have so just a few more touches up I actually like it it's a cool little tank um, in the next game I have, I hope it fares a lot better than what it did. Uh, the next thing is, this is the fire marker that I was talking about. Um, so basically it's just a washer. and I glued it, put some stuffing on there, and then hit it pretty heavy with orange paint, and then dusted it with black paint. So this is, you'll see this view in Sean's video. That's... That's what it looks like. Simple, easy. We'll do a little... I'll do a video of it at some point in time. So enough of that. Oh, the other thing on the on the Hellcat, I had to sand out... Um, take some sandpaper and sand out the um, the hole for the for the uh, turret because it, it was tight. So you can see it's a little tight there. I'm putting some good pressure on it. Um, it was seems like it was off on this area over here, but uh, nothing a little sandpaper and um, elbow grease wouldn't take care of. So these are the paras, um, various stages. So let's move them up here. Now these are all using, like I said before, this is using Warlord's recommendation uh, for paint colors. Uh, there's the mortar team, and then there's what nine, nine troops. Uh, what I did is I, um, I did. I'm not completely finished. I need to finish the boots and the lower, lower part areas, and then wash and um, do some touch-up on these three guys and then they'll be done um, but I'm trying to see if I can get this light to the uniform color is the thing that I am questioning I guess uh, these once again these are color recommendations by Warlord the only thing I did is is the knee and elbow pads I made darker than what they um, suggest. They suggest using uh, Russian green, and I just put a little black in there to darken it. Otherwise, it was it was too close to the um, 
the uh, shade of the uniform. You could see it, but it didn't didn't stick out, and I wanted it to stick out more. So this is my lieutenant. I need to um, how I do the faces is I um, put some black or brown wash in there. I don't paint eyes or anything. Um, I actually got that tip from somebody. I can't remember who. I wish I could. And um, and that makes the eyes pop a little bit more. So that's the lieutenant. Um, this is just a rifleman. And these come, well, the the box set that you get from Warlord, they come with shoulder decals. And I wanted to do 82nd, and they came with the 101st, because everybody does 101st Airborne because of Band of Brothers. I wanted to do something a little different. So I think because of that, I'm going to probably do 101st, which is no big loss. I obviously like the 101st as well. Uh, so this is a guy with a Thompson. Um, the decals on the troops are something that might be, excuse me, might be interesting. Uh, so I, they do come with like uh, rank insignia too. So I think what I'll do is I'll just do rank insignia on the NCOs and and just leave it at that. Uh, but anyway, that's the Paris comments. Um, suggestions on the uniform color or anything else always welcome um, and I'll wrap it up here um, once again I will put links down to, um, down below in the description for GameCraft miniatures put the link to Alan's website um, also we'll put a link to um, to Sean Wahoo Warriors YouTube channel check him out he's doing bat reps uh, a lot of bat reps for bold action uh, he also does some fantasy stuff too and does some tournaments so definitely worth checking out um, and if you're interested in how my first game went against him it's on there as well and I'll put a link to that specific battle report um, down below too um, anyways uh, this is me signing off um, I appreciate your time thanks for all the subscriptions and comments um, enjoy the holiday and take time to remember what the holiday is for. And um, that being said, uh, take care of each other, support each other, um, support those in the hobby, and um, happy wargaming. Bye.